Improving the reliability of points is one of the key challenges for Railtrack and its contractors. 10% of lost minutes are attributable to points failures, and last year this amounted to 900,000 minutes at a cost of £18 million. Point failures are our biggest problem. Junctions such as this can, can incur some horrendous delays with very short duration failures. If you have a signal failure, you can usually still move trains, but with a point failure, you can't move trains. Points failures, which are our second largest cause of delays, have a huge impact on our customers. Safety is also at the front of our minds, and reliable points are safe points. What is frustrating is that many of the failures are preventable. We can make a big difference by getting the basics right focusing on best practice and sharing this through the industry. I do a lot of point inspections every year and almost every time I go out I come back with a long list of point defects and we are never going to improve reliability of points until I and anyone can go out and not find any defects. A recent detailed survey in Scotland showed 65,000 lost minutes in one year due to points failures, at a cost of £1.3 million. The most common fault found was points being out of adjustment, but next to this, in a great many cases, no cause could be immediately identified. We looked at the statistics and we thought that possibly we were concentrating our energies on the signalling side as opposed to the PUA side. And then we went back and looked at them under traffic conditions. And we found out from that that quite a percentage of the failures were due to the stability of the point. My main concern is obviously no vibration, which is what we strive for, right? The effect of vibration on it. These rods are tied to the rails. Everything comes back to this box. And the bottom line is that this detects the points normally or reverse close, right? Now, the result of vibration in here causes this contact to make and break as the train goes over it. And that's obviously tied through the signals, which can put a signal for red, for green, back to red, and a driver's face, for example, and a train coming the opposite line. So that's how crucial this wee square in here is from an s &T point of view. And we strive to keep this, along with Jimmy here with the P-Way, to keep everything tight and no movement at all if we can get it. <laughs> As part of routine maintenance, any low spots in the track can be surveyed for correction. OK. Voiding has to be measured with trains running, using void meters. Even a slight movement is a cause for concern, because it's likely to develop but anything over 7 millimetres needs immediate rectification. There are a range of ways in which voiding can be eliminated, including tamping. But regular monitoring and hand packing is far more effective. 
Measured shovel packing is one of the tried and trusted techniques. Handheld stone blowers are also now in widespread use because they're an extremely efficient way of filling the voids. If we're doing a set of switches, we pack right through the whole switch. We don't just pack the void, we go right through the whole switch to tighten the whole switch from the front right past the heel. Uh, the screws and the bolts and everything's all torqued up and checked before we do any packing at all. When the thing's packed, it's sitting sound. At King's Cross, track engineers are following a similar policy of renewing key sets of points and maintaining a high level of stability with stone blowing. By installing permanent air hoses beside the track, they're able to stone blow these key sets of points at short notice, even during the day. If we can concentrate on eliminating voiding and maintaining a stable permanent way, a wide range of other problems will be reduced or even eliminated. When you're out, look for any missing or broken bolts. If you've spotted any movement or can see any telltale rust marks, you may well find missing or broken bolts. It's a lateral movement that I think it causes a problem. And that stems from loose screws, slack or broken bolts. It's actually no hard for anybody to notice these because you get this yellow scum round about them. It covers everything in yellow dust because it's vibrating. Now, if that wasn't sorted in the next two or three weeks, I would say, that could cause a point failure. There's one there that's not slack. Loose bolts need to be immediately tightened using a torque wrench, or in the case of huck bolts, need to be marked and scheduled for replacement. Damaged bolts are often an indication of voiding or other movement, so it's important to get rid of the root problem as well as making repairs. It's also essential to use the correct bolts. The wrong bolts or bolts which are too loose or tight will not last. Using check safe indicators is a new idea to help identify loose bolts. The indicator is positioned horizontally when the bolt is fixed and clearly shows any subsequent movement. There's a lot of shuffle on your chair. You, well, you can pick up yourself if you look at it. It starts to cause an indentation in the sleeper. If, if something's not done with that within the next three months, that'll be gone and it'll, it'll mean in putting a new timber in. Over looseness of chair screws allows movement of the chair, particularly if there is an element of voiding. And this results in the chair becoming embedded in the sleeper. Check for voiding and then tighten, but don't over tighten the screws. If screws are over tightened and the washers or ferrules squashed, the joints become too rigid and screws can pull completely loose. In this latter case, it may be possible to pack and repair the hole with a special plastic plug. Signalling equipment relies on being kept stable and tight if it's to work reliably, as you can see with this mechanical facing point lock. This is part of the routine visit in the four weekly thing. He inserts a gauge opposite the first slide chair and the idea is that he opens the blade that we touch to ensure that that lock doesn't enter. So the theory is that you can't lock a set of points that are open, they've got to be closed. Now moving further back, we've got what we call a kicker here. This is tied up to his detection box now. This here detects the lock closing its proper position. These two guys here detect each individual blade. So it's a three detection setup, one for the lock, one for the normal and one for the reverse blade. Again, tightness is everything. Back drive equipment is particularly susceptible to sleeper movement caused by voiding. 
the movement causes wear to the bearings and once these pivot points are damaged, they have to be replaced. Even strong pieces of equipment can eventually succumb to vibration problems. Signalling equipment is also susceptible to broken or missing bolts. If packing pieces have been used, it's important to make sure they're in place and secure, not loose like this. Insulated block joints next to point ends have a particularly hard life and must be kept stable. Again, if they're damaged, it's crucial to eliminate any voiding as well as making the repair. This, this, this is something else that we, we are doing now. We're fitting the Benkler joints into all the switches. Four hole Benklers and it's definitely it's the best joint we've had. That'll need to be ground off, because yeah, if yeah. it gets any worse at all, that blade's not going to shut and you're going to bother with your back drive. Rail lipping like this is likely to cause the points to fall below the technical specifications required for safe operation. And if swarf falls between the rails, will lead to a failure. Grinding with a rail mounted grinder will restore the profile and the fit of the rails and following this, the points are checked for correct operation. Physical obstructions come in a variety of forms. In some areas, rubbish can quickly accumulate and can potentially restrict the movement of points. There's also the risk of fire, particularly in DC areas, which can cause further damage, especially to cables and hoses. Ballast, which is too close to moving equipment, or moving parts which are rubbing against rails or other equipment, causes a strain on those components, which can lead to a failure. Here, a clip on a rail insulator can provide a quick fix prior to rectifying the problem. Vegetation also needs to be kept in check. Keep points equipment clean and unrestricted. It's important to keep cables and hoses neat and tidy to avoid potential damage from tampers and other equipment and also for safety. Cables should either be securely attached to the sleepers or protected in troughing or orange pipes. The pipes should be centered between sleepers, which allows the tampers to work safely. Once we have the basics right, innovations and good maintenance regimes can achieve further improvements, even in the most difficult areas. But the basic problem is the density of tracking. We've got so many trains going over, in and out all day long, night and day. 226s, for example, they feed uh, platforms 12 to 19. Their use constantly, they go over every two or three minutes. It's uh, in excess of 120 times a day. We've got a possession plan in place where we can get to the whole of Victoria every month. Every weekend we target a different set of points, a couple of sets of points each time. We're going through, we're tightening the components, we're changing any defect components. We're trying to get to things before they fail. Well, there's an action plan for every set of points. Some of them we're going to be doing major work on. Other ones we're going to be bringing Swihag rollers. We're going to put in the new green rams if it's clamp locks. Um, we're going to put in special types of bolts. For every individual set of points that's got its own solutions, depending on what was wrong with it. We've got to get the, the formation right. We've got to get the points to the latest specification and make sure that the points are solid. They don't move. The trains go over them. Yeah, this set of points has had green rams installed, uh, which increase the thrust produced by 44%, making them as powerful as HW point machines. It's also got a four-port pump unit Fireproof hydraulic hoses, which uh, obviously prevent point fires. This set of points leads into an aggregate siding, 
and we used to suffer from getting grit etc on the slide chairs the manganese slide chairs have solved that problem these points have been fitted with ITW micro switches and moldy detection leads the ITW micro switches are a more reliable switch than the old Dalmac ones the molded leads alleviate the problem with vibration with crimps breaking and they also make changing the leads much quicker if they're, if they're subject to tamper damage or any, or any fire damage like that. The plug couplers for the HW style point machines, whilst not being a major failure reduction, they will certainly help in other ways, speed of installation, the disconnection and renewal item. Traditionally you'd have staff working out there in, in, the, in the danger area, if you like, actually wiring machines up. In future now machines will be pre-wired in the factory the, the disconnection boxes are mounted in a, in a safe cess. There's a, a major uh, potential to reduce red zone working. We're also uh, trying out Shui Hag rollers, which we intend to fit to all our sets of points in the near future. And we're also welding up all joints within S&C and moving any block joints away from the point ends themselves to try and stabilise the S&C and, and make them more reliable. And when we do get repetitive failures, we now look into them far more deeply and try to find the root cause rather than just getting over the fault, which is something that we used to do. This is a map of the signal engineer Clapham's area. Each of the interlockings are highlighted on this map. The system means that we don't have to take possessions to go through and check lots of different sets of points when we have a failure or change of aspect. We can go directly to the set of points that's caused the problem. At the top, the relay change in state will be indicated up here and show you exactly what's happening and the time it happened so if we have a change of aspect on the signal we can see what happened immediately prior to the change of aspect and it cuts down on the testing time tremendously for the technicians. Brush Junction is a very high profile site it suffered a high number of failures and we felt it was appropriate to introduce the monitoring system to that specific site to begin with. That initiative has now been taken on board by Railtrack who are looking to introduce it into other sites including New Street. It's, it's giving useful data that can actually uh, indicate potential failures and that's what the site is intended to do. There are levels, alarm levels preset, uh, such things as operating time, which once the level is exceeded an alarm is generated. Currently that can be viewed via a computer workstation or via a pager. And what we can see in front of us is an operation at normal to reverse and we can actually see the current profile there. What we can now do is overlay a profile that we know to be correct and we can see there that that's pretty pretty close to being the same. If we were starting to see um, changes in the peak current, high currents being drawn, it would indicate that faults were starting to develop inside the machine. We've adopted joint S&C teams which involves staff from the, the P-Way department and, and the S&T department. Traditionally the work would have been done as, as an individual exercise but we've seen there's a lot of benefit by having a joint team who can who can tackle all the problems on one visit rather than having more than more than one or, or several visits to the site with a with a team of seven or eight men you can you can deliver all the work and have sufficient protection for the staff and, the, and any heavy work can be done with with the extra staff that you've got you know 100 percent better now it is brilliant you're always going to find something every time you come through. Of course you are. There's always I mean... going to find something. But when we first come through, Drew will agree with me, there was a lot of stuff to do. We were doing 80% maintenance on a set of points, whereas now, you see, we're doing just the SMSs <laughs> and the SO53s. You get a sense of ownership. They, they look after the problems. When we come through the next time, we know that it's our work. So if we come through and we find something, we can't criticise anybody else. It's our work. So it's a case of coming through and hopefully the next time you come through, on the next maintenance period, we're not finding anything. What we've seen is that we can dramatically improve points reliability by getting the basics right and working together as local teams. When you're out and about, remember, look out for voiding which is putting a strain on the points equipment, 
loose or missing bolts or screws which are allowing movement, look out for telltale rust, shoe shuffle due to loose screws, also missing bolts on signalling equipment, look for equipment which is failing or fractured, and for rail lipping, and look for anything that is preventing smooth movement such as stretcher bars or rods rubbing against the underside of rails vegetation obstructing rod runs, rubbish or other debris between the points, and ballast which is too close to moving parts. Look for cables or hoses which are badly positioned, poorly protected or damaged. Minor faults can often be dealt with straight away, before they become major problems. And those major problems need to be dealt with immediately. If you can't deal with something straight away, make sure you report it, so that the work can be scheduled. If we can spot problems early, we'll improve reliability and make life easier. A well-maintained set of points will be safe, reliable and will have a good long asset life. We're getting in regularly and we're, we're getting to the faults before they happen. Work with your S&T colleagues, find out what's going on out there, if there is a problem, get to it. We put the whole thing together and, and, and sort things out before they actually fail. There is no reason why points should fail unless something falls in the switch. If that doesn't happen, they shouldn't fail.